Hey everyone, this is the second half of a two-part video series on how do you do graphics programming using the Open Watcom compiler on FreeDOS. In the first video, we learned how to use the rectangle function to just do some simple drawing on the graphics screen. Here we're going to take it a next step. We're going to use the rectangle function and another function called ellipse that will allow us to draw obviously ellipses in circles. And we're going to draw a simple version of the Senet board. If you remember the uh, video series we did last year about how to do C programming, we made a character mode version of the ancient Egyptian Senet game. Here we're just going to do a version of the uh, game board itself. We're not going to add all the stuff around playing the game. That'd be too much for this video. We're just going to show how do you draw the board itself onto the screen. So at the beginning of my program, I need to include standard io.h. That's going to let me do any kind of printing and character mode I need to do. I'm also going to include conio.h. And that lets me use functions like get ch to get a key off the keyboard. And I'm also going to include uh, graph.h, which lets me do uh, graphics and colors. Let's go ahead and start my main function here. And at the beginning, of course, we're going to need to set the video mode into graphics mode. So we're going to do set video mode. That's our function uh, that we're going to call. And then we're going to set it into uh, VRES 16 color. And so that's going to put me into 640 by 480. And that's going to give me 16 colors. And those 16 colors are the same colors that we would normally use in plain text mode, right? So that's going to be... Uh, 0 to 15, and the first 8 are going to be the low-intensity colors, and the upper 8 will be the high-intensity colors. Before I end the program, I just want to make sure I don't forget to set my video mode back to default mode. And that puts me back into plain text mode. I'm going to go ahead and uh, also just print out uh, a little string. Just let me know I made it back into text mode, and from there I'll return back to the operating system. And uh, ooh, before that, I'll do a, a get ch. It'll get a key off the keyboard. So now I, I remember not to mess up my program. Uh, let's go ahead and, and draw a field onto the screen. So I'm going to uh, set color to 2. And that's going to get me the low intensity green color. And I'm going to make a rectangle. And if you remember the rectangle, uh, the first... Uh, option is uh, describing if the rectangle should be filled or not. And so we're going to do G fill interior. And that's going to give us a completely filled rectangle. If you remember about graphics programming, you're going to you give it X, Y coordinates where the X, Y at the upper left hand corner is zero. Uh, so it's going to be zero, zero for the upper left hand corner. And then on the lower right hand corner, it's going to be uh, 639 comma 479 and it might be easier as we do our programming up here to actually define the x resolution as being 640 and the define the y resolution as being uh, 480 and then rather than having to remember to subtract one all the time i can just say uh, this is the x res minus one and the y res minus one and so now I've got a rectangle that's going to completely fill the back of the uh, or the background of my screen. Uh, and then on top of that, I'm going to draw another uh, rectangle. So I'm going to draw a, uh, I'm going to do set color. And let's do this as uh, color eight. And so what that's going to give me is the uh, bright black color, which is basically a different kind of gray. And so here I'm going to do a rectangle. And it's going to be a G fill interior. That way it's completely filled and I can do that at zero, zero. And then, um, how far off do I want it? Well, it's going to be certainly X res minus one. And then it's going to be, um, as big as a square times three, which I need to put in here. So, uh, what's the size of my square? So I'm going to say the, uh, the size of a square, uh, is going to be, uh, we'll just say, uh, size times three. And then uh, that's that'll be our, our rectangle, right? So up here we'll define the size of a rectangle or size of a square on, a, on the board. So we're going to define the uh, size as being uh, the uh, 
we can fit uh, 10 of these on the screen and uh, in, in rows of three. And so if I've got uh, 10 of them, then each one's going to be 64 pixels wide and, of course, 64 pixels tall. So I'm, I'm going to make size is 64. That's basically taking the X resolution uh, and dividing it by uh, 10. So uh, there we go. That's, that's my... Uh, uh, that's my size of a square. I want to have three rows of those 10 squares. And so now I've got a rectangle that uh, starting at the top of the screen is uh, 0, 0. And then it's going to go all the way to the right-hand side, x res minus 1. And then it's going to go down as far as uh, size uh, time 3. Uh, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and just uh, compile and see what we've got. I'm going to do the Watcom compiler and linker. And we'll put that into quiet mode with slash Q. And then we'll do synet dash C and I'm not seeing any errors. So I can just go ahead and run synet and I should just get a, uh, a green background and then a, uh, a, a gray sort of rectangle at the top of the screen. And then it's going to ask me for, uh, hitting a key. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see here, I've got a green background and at the top. I've got a, a sort of a gray, uh, a rectangle. And that's exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and uh, and now draw on top of that. So the reason that we wanted to create that gray rectangle first is because now we only need to draw half of the squares that are on there because we're going to alternate uh, the colors of our squares. So we're going to do uh, fed uh, synet dot c. And now let's go ahead and uh, look at the uh, oops right here. I want to uh, now I want to draw the squares. So draw the squares. And so for that, I need to do a loop. And so I'm going to do four. And I'm going to introduce a new variable here called square or SQ, starting at one. And then the uh, the square being uh, less than 10. And then the, uh, the square plus plus. And so that's my loop. And then before I forget about it, let's go up here and say uh, the integer variable of square. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, and draw this. So the first and third rows, we're going to want to print the uh, the odd numbered squares. So we're going to just say this. So the, the first and third rows, we're going to want to draw those squares. So how do we do that? Um, the uh, well, actually, we're going to need to determine if this is an odd number or not. So let's go up here and define real quick a, a function that says uh, int is odd and that's going to take an integer of n and how do we know if it's an odd number well if you remember your bits uh, we can do a return of n with a binary and of one and that's because that'll catch all numbers like one three five and so on because if you look at your uh, bit patterns that rightmost bit at the one uh, position uh, will always be turned on if it's an odd number because you have to add one to it somewhere. And so that's our function if something is odd. So go back down to our loop. I want to say that uh, if it's an odd number, um, so if uh, is odd, that square, uh, then I'm going to want to draw the... Uh, first and third rows. Let's actually move our comment in here. First and third rows. And I'm going to just do two rectangle statements. So I'm going to say uh, rectangle, and that's going to be a filled rectangle, G fill interior. And uh, where do I want this to be? Well, it's going to be uh, at uh, size times the square number. So if I'm on zero, which I won't be, but uh, if I'm on zero, that'll be zero, the left-hand side. Well, the first one, it's going to be odd. It's going to be one. So it's going to be size times one. So it'll start at the 64th uh, pixel over. And uh, I want to start this on the first row. And so that means it's going to be uh, just at uh, zero. And then how far down do I want it to go? Let's give myself a little extra room here. So how far down do I want it to go? Well, it's going to be 
uh, going to um, uh, size times and then uh, square plus one. And then uh, how far down do I want it to go? It's going to be uh, the, uh, going to be just down to size, actually, now that I look at it. And that's, that's my first row. Probably going to put that all in one line. And then the second, uh, the third row is going to be rectangle. G fill interior. And so where's that going to start? Well, that's going to start at uh, the same X position, size times the square. And that needs to start at, um, it's going to be size times two. And then where does it end up? What's the bottom right-hand corner of that rectangle? That should be the... Same as we got up above, size times the square plus one. And that's going to be, uh, instead of size times two, it's going to be size times three. And so that should be the third row. Uh, before we go on, let's make sure that we haven't messed up our, uh, uh, our code. So let's go ahead and do a save and quit. Watcom compiler and linker slash Q to make it quiet and then sinet.c. And if I run sinet, um, I have forgotten to set the color. So let's go ahead and go back and set that. So uh, fed sinet.c. And so basically, what's just happened is I drew a whole bunch of uh, black, bright black uh, uh, squares on top of a bright black uh, rectangle. And that meant that I don't actually see anything. So I should probably set the color and we'll set this to seven which is a um uh, sort of a, a a gray sort of white color. i think that's low intensity white and so now i can go ahead and save and quit watcom compiler and linker quiet sinet.c and if i run sinet you can see i'm getting uh my first and third rows are all filled in so now i just need to do the second row and then we'll be good to have a uh uh, we'll be good to have a, um, a Sinet board. So we can do uh, fed sinet.c. And then down here, if it's not odd, then there's an else. Then I'm going to do the second row. And so that's going to be at, uh, we're going to do a rectangle at G fill interior, so that way it's a completely filled in rectangle. And so where is that going to start? Well, it's going to start at uh, size times the square number, right? So that way uh, zero will start at the left-hand side. Uh, two will be size times two uh, and so on. And so we're going to have that be at uh, the Y is going to start at just, uh, should be just size, right? And so that should get me the second row. And then uh, down here, we'll say it's going to end up the lower right hand corner of that rectangle is going to be at size uh, times the square plus one number. And then uh, that's going to end up also at uh, size times two, if I'm doing my math right. And so if we go ahead and save and quit and do a Watcom compiler and linker slash Q sinet.c. Now, if we run that program, you can see that now we've actually drawn the complete sinet board. And so then after this, all you need to do is uh, just add the pieces that you want to draw on the board. And then uh, you can also highlight uh, maybe the square if you want to do a highlight uh, on, on certain things. Let's select your move so we can go back and edit our program, fed sinet.c. Go ahead and draw some pieces on the board. And so we'll do that right here. Draw pieces. And so um, we're going to say for uh, square equals uh, zero. Uh, and then uh, as long as square is less than 10, 
and then square plus plus. I could do this in the, uh, the loop that we just did, but I'm going to just draw it down here as a separate loop. And then uh, I'm going to set the color. Um, so one way I could do this is let, let's just, let's make it the easiest way. So if uh, is odd of that square number, then I'm going to set color to uh, let's make it uh, let's make it blue. And so that'll be one. So that should be a blue color. Otherwise, if it's even, then uh, we're going to set color to red. And so that should be four. And now we can draw the, uh, the ellipse there. And so we're going to say um, an ellipse function. So this is very similar to the rectangle function, except here where it's going to, it will obviously be uh, curved edges. And if you make it a square, then it's going to define a circle. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. And it's the same calling syntax as up above. So we want to do G fill interior. And we want to start that at, um, Oh, how do I want that math to be? I want that to start at uh, size times the square, and then we'll just indent it a little bit. We'll make it like, give it like 10 pixels. And then uh, the Y coordinate needs to be uh, 10 because it's actually the first row. And then uh, the bottom right of that ellipse needs to be uh, the... Um, if I'm doing this one right, this should be the uh, size times the square plus one. And then I want to subtract 10. So that way I give it a little bit of, uh, you know, padding on that square. And then the bottom uh, edge of that needs to be uh, size minus 10. And so that should give me a, uh, an ellipse which is defined inside a square, which will be a circle. And this will alternate between blue and red. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and save what I've got and make sure this is working. So Watcom compiler and linker slash Q to make it quiet. So we don't get all that extra debugging information when it runs the program and then synet.c. And I made a, uh, an error in there somewhere. Let's go ahead and fix my ellipse. Uh, so fed synet.c. And where did I make my error? Oh, right here. So I'm missing a parenthesis. So that should be my error. Save and quit. Watcom compiler and linker. And then run Synet. And so now my first row has got alternating uh, red and blue uh, pieces on it, which is exactly what I want for a Synet board, right? You want to set that first row to be alternating uh, pieces for player one and player two. Now, if I were going to write this as an actual game, I'd want to be able to select the square that I want to make a move from. And an easy way to do that would be to, uh, rather than redraw the square every time, is to just put a highlight around the square itself. And so we can do that. And we'll make one more change here. So we'll do fed to net.c just to see what that looks like. Uh, so over here, we'll uh, highlight the uh, the first square, right? So this is a, an example of how you would uh, make a highlight of a, of a certain square. If you're going to be including this in a game, you'd want to obviously move this square around. But we're just going to highlight the first square just so you can see how to do it. And so for that, we're going to uh, set the color, and we'll do that to 14. That gives me a nice bright yellow color good for a highlight. And I'm going to do a uh, rectangle because I want to go around the edge of my uh, square that I had done before, which I used using a rectangle function. Now, rather than using G fill interior, we actually want to just do the border. So I'm going to do G border. And uh, where do I want the upper left? It's going to be, uh, should be zero, zero for that first one. And then what's the uh, right hand side the bottom right actually of that square it should be size and 
size, right? Because it's just the first square. First square. And that should be it, right? And my, my program should now be done. And so I'm going to go ahead and save and quit. And if I do a Watcom compiler and linker slash Q, sinet.c, then run sinet. You can see that now I've got the start of a Sinet game in graphics mode, where I've got a green background for the entire screen. I've drawn my Sinet board, and you remember I only had to draw half of the squares on there because I drew a big rectangle first in that darker gray, and then I used the lighter gray to do the alternating squares. Uh, and then I drew the pieces on there, and they were just drawn as simple circles because that's what the Sinet board uses. You can do the same kind of concept for checkers, by the way. And uh, to highlight certain squares, we're just going to do an outline, a border on each of those squares. And so we could then, uh, rather than having to draw the entire square every time we move the highlight, we just need to erase the, uh, uh, the border that I put it there before, and then we just draw another border on top of it. So it's uh, rather than drawing the whole thing, you're just drawing a little, a little uh, border around each one, very fast to uh, move things around. And so that's a typical way that you might draw a, a game in graphics mode. And so this is just a simple representation of the Sinet game in graphics mode. You might add other code in here to create an offset so you can more or less center that uh, on the screen. You might add some other code to change the size of the board. But this is the basics of how you'd use the ellipse function and the rectangle function to create simple shapes in your game. Uh, before I go, I'll just mention that uh, patrons are going to get a bonus, and so there's going to be a bonus video for my patrons about how do you use these ellipse functions to draw bananas. And so if you wanted to make a simple version of a game where monkeys throw bananas at each other, that might be one way that you might do that. Uh, before I go, I want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here for that, so thank you very much. Visit our website at freedas.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.